It's the Fogo Island punt race from there and back. Just sit and I'll tell you how she goes. We started the canal and we roll like hell. Can we reach Change Islands on that western shore? Can we reach Change Islands on that western shore? Well, I was never paired off a race or had seen races like it, you know. But I'm in this long race, open water and choppy seas, and you're going to want me tough. You know, it's only the tough going to survive. I didn't expect that they'd uh, uh, do a, a race on this scale, this, this magnitude. I thought it just might be like a, a harbour race, uh, like we used to do years ago. But. Uh, it involves as well change islands, so this is quite different. We haven't done anything like this. So we're about to make history. It's the first annual Fogo Island Rowing Regatta, 10 miles, there and back. I think I'm looking at the bravest 20 people uh, between Fogo Island and Change Island. So I want to thank each of you for, uh, for taking this on. It's a great challenge. <coughs> Let's start with the safety items first. Um, life jackets. Everyone knows you're required to have one. If it was years ago, they would be able to run their uh, uh, row there a lot better than they will now. Because they're not so used to rowing now as they was then. You know, you take uh, years ago, we rode the Fogo Islands. And, and my uncle, he rode the Fogo Islands and rode back. So that was 30 miles. See, you do a lot of rowing then when you couldn't sail. You get it, you roll. Energy bars, guys. Grab some of those. Yeah. Just grab that one. This race is it, really going to accomplish uh, what it's set out to be, and that's to bring the wooden punt back. There's people that live here on the island that are uh, taking part in this race, and there's like people that grew up here that live elsewhere are coming back to do the race. Like, um, that have left, left the island, went to school, and are working off the island, and they're coming back to actually take part in the race. We both got little boys, right? And it's important to me for them to look back and say, you know, well, Mom tried it, you know, and she was the first one to try it. And be proud of us, right, for what we're doing. Because it is a big challenge. It's not going to be easy. When they cross the finish line, it's going to be a personal triumph for these crews, that they have survived which seems to me like a long course. Five miles over to Change Islands and five miles back. So to cross the finish line and therefore take these boats into a new relevance where they can be enjoyed and used by many people and therefore stimulate a desire for more boats, I think that's very meaningful.
the punt race, is, it's, it's not about the race, it's about the people. And, and the people are embodied in the punts. And it, it was slipping away from us. And so we really felt to bring it back, we needed to do something bold to create attention to it. And I really believe if we lose the little punts, we will lose part of who we are and part of the human history and therefore part of, part of, what, of the potential that we have to be. So the race is to be bold, to draw attention to it, to create an energy around it, to um, tell the world that you know we've done these wonderful things and we're still doing these wonderful things and find a way for other people to participate in it. <laughs> A boat is conceived in the mind of the builder. And then all the raw material is brought to the brought to the to the boatyard and the boat evolves. Everyone is different, right? Because right, every point you build on a model, you never build on the same one again, is it? It's just the shape of the punt, the work you put into it, right? You'll know your own punt. I'm proud to be able to build a boat, sure, I guess, yes. Just something that, that a lot of people can't do. See, he's built a boat, and a whole fellow like me, look, uh, can build her, see? Yes, can be good shape it out and build her. Oh, yes. I would know every one I ever, ever built. I've built, I suppose, probably 40 or more over the years. I would know every one if they were still around, which they're not. But if they were around, I would know if I built it. The boat is your baby, you know. You, you, you build her, you, you, you conceive her in your mind. You build her. Oh yes, if I had the high sight, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, 78 year old just about it, but if I had the high sight, my li I'd like to be able to fix it out now, build a boat. <laughs> Well, the boats that we see here today are products of a cultural evolution in this place, as we see in other Newfoundland communities, as we see in other maritime communities around the world. And the, the wonderful thing about them is that they are intimately tied to certain places. They're designed to fit the local circumstance of weather, of sea conditions, uh, and so on. So they are of this place. I mean, when you think about rural Newfoundland and, and Fogo Island specifically and, and all the towns on Fogo Island, people made a living from the sea. And people lived in a very harsh but very artistic way. So every man built his boat, his skiff or his punt to please himself. And it had to have a function and that the knowledge of how to hold it together so it can survive in the North Atlantic and perform the way you want it to has been handed down you know, through the generations and not written down generally, just handed down, taught by one father to his son and the next father to his son in a, diff in a slightly different way.
how each man implemented that or how he painted it or how he turned it up and how he felt was going to get the best performance was really personal and, and individual and expressive. I mean, that to me is, is art. And so you have art embodied in something that is, is involved in, in making a livelihood. And so I don't know what's more essentially human than that. The Gumlins were always highly respected boat builders. My father was a great boat builder. Ed is a great boat builder. And like, it's a responsibility to keep up the tradition. No, I've done a lot of things with boats. I, over the years, well, some of the boats around here today, I, I've made them wider, just cut them in half and push them apart, make them bigger, longer, wider, deeper. I've done all those things and installed their engines and a lot of different, a lot of different things. Any, any man almost can build a house. If you cut your stuff off, or say into square, you can build a house. Like, but a boat see, there's a lot of shaping it out and getting it fixed out. It's different, see, different than a boat. Now, I never, I never was much for, I never was much for building a house. I could build it if I want to, but uh, you know, I, I love to build a boat. <laughs> I just like that. Is all. I just more or less to come in. And punch in a few hours at it anyway, right? When I'm building a pond, I got no time to say I'm going to get her done, right? That's it. I might come down for an hour today, and perhaps have all day or tomorrow, right? I might go to bed in the night and might have spoiled something in the day, right? Never got it to work out, and that night in the bed, think about it, well, yes, right? Now I know how to do it right. Well, sometimes you you know you might be a little bit uneasy, afraid you know it's not going to be a good boat. She's not going to look right in the water. She's not going to have the right shear. She you know she's going to be too deep. She's going to be too this or too that. And of course, there've been some built around that were what we used to call cranky, right? If you know what that is, they're a bit tippy. You get aboard, and, you know you're not you don't feel safe, right? You something like canoe, you're afraid to get, afraid to lean on the side of it. But we didn't build too many of those. We always tried to keep them a bit flat in the bottom, so you. You're pretty safe. Well, the fiberglass and steel, you know, it's... Well, I mean, these boats are still important, very important to the people who have them, eh? but, uh, but they're just made in the mold, and getting, getting into one of those fiberglass boats, to me, is only like getting into your bathtub, you know, <laughs> hey. I'd rather have a, wood, a wooden boat any day than have fiberglass. There's something about wood, I don't know what it is. No matter what part of the boat I'm doing, if I'm doing making ribs or if I'm getting the keel ready or the stem, uh, I'm, I'm not just building the boat, I'm, I'm doing something that's been done so many times before. I learned it from my dad, eh? And he learned it from his dad, and he learned it from his dad. You know, it's just handed down from generation to generation. So when I'm building the boat, you know, I, you know they're, they're, they're in my mind, you know. Well, it's not going to be really the finish line as such in terms of a prize. It may be the finish line in terms of just finishing the race. And uh, it'll be just reminiscing about when we were growing up and all the, the little regattas we had in our own community right here in the harbour, all the, the boyhood days. Oh, when I'm in the middle of uh, nine extra pounds, I'm going to be pulling a little harder, I think. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I like the roam with the, the pont I build, right? It's just nice to roll down one. You'll know when you start rolling it, you'll know if she rolls hard or whatever, right? And the pont is a bit stiff, well, if she's a bit stiff, well, she's hard to roll. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Gilbert and Melon. So I think the building of boats will change to uh, for speed race, you know. They built the Blue Nose, and a lot of people worked on her, tried to beat her, right? Steaming, but uh, I don't think she could trim her. Or the old Polina. So uh, I think this will come to. Uh, boats will be different design, builders. And the rower will be proud of uh, a fast boat, easy boat, whatever to row. And I'm sure the builder will be very proud too to know that my boat come first this year, and probably second the next year, and then I got to improve that again. And I think a lot of people is going to come and see it. And it's going to mean a lot for go on. And uh, tourism and selling quilts and blankets and mats and whatever you got. Get it ready. <laughs> this is hopefully employment, creating employment for us all. Because really in bad shape. You know, there's, there's places in worse shape, I know that. But uh, a lot of our young people got to leave home. And a few boats fishing, that uh, that's not going to save it, right? Well, there are plenty of young people, of course, can, can, can outrow fellows my age. Plenty of young people. If any young 21 year olds enter this race, two 21 year olds in a, in a punt, they probably could easy best people my age. My, my, my partner is 55, I'm 52. I mean, you're long past your prime for athletics. Well, I might cross the finish line. <laughs> Not any guaranteed there. <laughs> I might have a heart attack before he gets across there. If there were only a few people that showed up and they were only the boat builders and the people who are going to row the boats, that would be a bit sad, but that's clearly not the case here. Th these are important events, not only for the competitive aspect, but for the, the aspect of the, the revitalization uh, of, of an important tradition here. And, and everyone who comes, I think, uh, understands that, and that's part of why they're here too. I, I think to me it's a, it's a new beginning. It's, someone used the phrase, I'm not sure if it was Rex Murphy or Farley Mowat, because I read both of them and they're both poets, said, you know, it's about finding new ways with old things. And finding, for, you know, the challenge for Roman fan in particular is to find a new way in an old continuity. And to me, that's what that is. That's the beginning of, of that. These punts were really, really important years ago, but there's no use for them like that today, but all of a sudden, you know, you can use them for recreation and for 
You know, we got a regatta, you know. We got to see who get the best punt, and who can get the fastest punt, you know. Who can win the race? Oh, it's, it's become competitive now, eh? So, if you can get a punt that's good to roll and you can win that race, uh, you know, that's, that's good, eh? That'll be, then the fellow next door next year, he's going to be, well, gee, I got to get a punt and see if I can't win it next year. Eh? On a symbolic level, to cross the finish line means that these boats, as a cultural object, have crossed a new point, at least on this island, of relevance through use. I think this regatta is going to be a big thing. I think we're, we're only just seeing the tip of the iceberg now. I think it might evolve into a, a world-class event and really put us on the map. It's the Fogo Island Punt Race from there and back. Just sit and I'll tell you how she goes. We started the canal and we'll roll like hell. Till we reach Change Islands on that western shore. Till we reach Change Islands on that western shore. Who'd have ever given thought? Hundred years, our little wooden boats would find new ways. Dying embers in the sun left to vanish everyone. Our sturdy workhorses of the sea. It's the Fogo Island punt race from there and back. Just sit and I'll tell you how she goes. We started the canal and we on that western shore till we reach change islands on that western shore we're head to the northwest and this challenge as our test of the strength of our forefathers history a new purpose has come forth as we land at our new port how they survived is still a mystery it's the Fogo Island punt race from there and back. Just sit and I'll tell you how she goes. We start at the canal and we'll roll like hell till we reach Change Islands on that western shore. Till we reach Change Islands on that western shore. We will take off on our course. With a little breeze for force And we'll paddle hard with all our energy With our hearty men and gals We don't need no heavy swells In our little boats we'll travel brave and free It's the Fogo Island Punt Race From there and back Just sit and I'll tell you how she goes We start at the canal Change islands on that western shore. 
Till we reach change on his on that western shore